So we're in a two-part message series called The Sacraments. And this last week, I gave a definition of sacraments in order to get the series started. I want to give that definition again. It's also in the top of your notes. The sacraments of baptism and communion are simple practices instituted by Jesus and graciously given to the church, which reflect Christ's redemption of sinners and symbolize God's inner work in the lives of believers. The sacraments reflect a reality far beyond water, bread, and wine for those who have eyes to see and a heart to understand. As I shared this last week, we do not participate in the sacraments to earn salvation, but rather those who are saved participate in order to remember what Christ has done. This last week, I shared a challenge when it comes to the sacraments as well as my goal over these two messages. And here's that challenge once again. The challenge is that Jesus used very simple objects, things like water, bread, wine, the cross, in order to symbolize these deep spiritual realities. But our exposure to those simple objects causes us to become desensitized over time. What I mean by that is the more often believers participate in communion, the more often we see people baptized, the easier it is to separate or to divide the object from the owner himself. So my goal, my prayer in these two messages is that God would allow me to present truths in such a way that it would recapture people's hearts for the sacraments, that somehow the Holy Spirit would take the words of Scripture use these two messages in order to help people once again enjoy and have our hearts captured for the reality of what the sacraments represent. So this last week, we began with the first sacrament of communion. And in that message, I talked about its origin being in the Passover meal and how you need to understand the Passover meal to understand communion and how communion itself is designed to share the redemptive story of God. And today we address the second sacrament of baptism. Uh, many people know this already, but just very simply stated, baptism is an initial step of a disciple's journey with Jesus. It is how we publicly identify as being followers of Christ. Now, refusing to take that step, or for that matter, indefinitely postponing that step, will have a negative impact on our relationship with God. Now, the reason I share that is because our walk with God grows at the intersection of two words, trust and obey. Will we trust him? Will we obey him? A no to either one of those particular questions is going to stall our growth in Christ. It's going to disrupt our intimacy with God. And often you'll find that a no to either one of those questions will bring the chastening hand of God into our lives. Now, Jesus is very clear when he tells his disciples to baptize new followers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the question becomes, what gets in the way of that happening? Why is that not natural? Why is that not almost immediate? Like, if Jesus says, be baptized then why is that not one of the first things that many people do when it comes to being saved? Well, there's a number of ways that we could answer this, but I think a lot of it comes back to two different words, confusion and fear. So let's talk for a moment about confusion. People are confused at both extremes, and here's what I'm talking about with extremes. They either place too much emphasis on baptism thinking it's only something that really, 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 really spiritual people do, or they place too little emphasis on baptism, thinking God's only going to be serious about it if he writes the word baptism in their Cheerios at breakfast. It should be one of those things that baptism should not paralyze people with fear, nor should it be seen as unimportant. It is a trust and obey proposition. Now, baptism can also be confusing because of a lot of our religious traditions. Every church is different. Every denomination is different. For that matter, churches within denominations are different. So some people are baptized as infants. Others are baptized as adults. Some people are sprinkled. 
Others get dunked. We do a lot of dunking going on in this church. Some people are baptized in these elaborate baptistries. It looks like one of Solomon's porticos. And then other people are baptized in their backyard jacuzzi or in a swimming pool or in a river or in the ocean or in a lake or in a horse trough. By the way, I have been known to baptize a lot of people in a horse trough. In fact, we would put a horse trough in the back of my truck, fill it with water, go down to a homeless church we were starting, and baptize people on the street. Now, by the way, when you turn the corner with the baptistry filled, you got to be careful on that. So baptism can be confusing. If you're confused about it, I understand. That's why I'm actually doing this message I want to do my best to help people understand what baptism is and to try to remove a lot of the confusion. And I want to do my best to give people the confidence they need to follow Christ obediently. Now, I'm going to give you my unrealistic plan, my prayer from the very beginning. Here's how unrealistic this is. I'm going to give it to you, and that way if I tell you, you'll know where we're going. Here's my prayer. By the time this service is over with, Every single person in this room who has repented of their sin by placing faith in Jesus Christ will have already been baptized or will get baptized today. That's the plan. I, I want to be very clear. Like, I, I, I have a purpose in this. I want to encourage people today to take that next step of obedience when it comes to their walk with God. Now, for us to do that, I'm going to give one big truth, and we are going to pull that apart in multiple different ways. Here's your big truth. Christian baptism is a symbolic act of obedience that identifies a person with Jesus while telling the gospel story. Let me share that again. Christian baptism is a symbolic act of obedience that identifies a person with Jesus while telling the gospel story. That's our truth. We're going to come at it from multiple angles. I invite you to go with me in your Bibles this morning to Acts chapter number 8. Acts 8, we're going to be in verses 34 through 39. I'm speaking this morning simply on the topic of baptism. Acts chapter 8, 34 through 39. It says, the eunuch answered Philip and said, please tell me, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. And as they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all of your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch no longer saw him, but went on his way rejoicing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may every obstacle fall in front of obedience to you this morning. We have sung that you would be glorified. God, you alone are the one who can do that. So, Lord, today, may you use your word May you use my lips. May your spirit move in the hearts of people today. God, across the board, may we bring our obedience up to date. In Jesus' name, amen. So it has been said that there are at least seven physical or symbolic baptisms that are found in Scripture. These are listed in your notes. The first is the baptism of Moses found in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 3. It spoke of God's people being under the cloud and going through the sea. It was a type of baptism. Then there's the baptism of John, mentioned specifically Mark chapter 1, verse 4. Then there's the baptism of Jesus, found in Matthew chapter 3, 13 through 17. Then there's the baptism of fire, found in Matthew 3, 11 and 12. This is speaking of Jesus judging the world of sin. Then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. This occurs at salvation. That is, he covers us, he indwells us, he immerses us within the body of Christ. Then there's the baptism of the cross found in Mark chapter 10, 
35 through 39. Jesus used this language to refer to his suffering and to the suffering of his disciples. And then there is the baptism of believers found in Matthew 28, 19. This is an outward symbol of the Holy Spirit's work in the believer's heart. Now, of the seven baptisms that I've just mentioned, there's two that have a greater significance for believers today. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that happens at the moment of salvation, and then the baptism of believers, which identifies us with Christ and with his church. The other baptisms, while they are important and they are biblical, they are unique to other times and to certain people, as well as to future events. So I want us to now focus on Acts chapter 8. And the reason this is such a great text is because it covers so many of the basics when it comes to baptism. It's important that you know the story as we work our way through the text. So here's the story. In previous verses, Philip was preaching the gospel in Samaria. An angel of the Lord came to Philip and he told him, go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, the angel of the Lord did not tell him why he was supposed to go, did not tell him what was going to happen once he arrived. He just says, you need to go, and Philip obeyed. So when Philip got there, this Ethiopian eunuch was sitting in a chariot reading from the book of Isaiah. He was confused about what he was reading, and we find that Philip simply asked the question, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy said, no, Paul's right there. This might be one of the best things you get this morning. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Help follows honesty. Hold on to that for a moment. Help follows honesty. If you don't understand what the Bible's saying, be honest. If you're hurting, be honest. If you're confused, be honest. Help follows honesty. Uh, Fake it till you make it is bad spiritual advice. Now, some people will never get the help that they need because they're not honest about their need. Let's go a step beyond that. Some people will never get the help they need because they are unwilling to accept the help that is offered. Let's go one step beyond that. Some people will never get the help they need because the church is not being the church. That's like three messages right there for another time. But y'all hold on to that. So based on verses 34 and 35, Philip started where the man was and preached Jesus to him. Now, we don't know what that looked like. It might have been five minutes. It could have been five hours for all we know. What we do know is he started where he was and he preached Jesus to him. Here's an important idea. When you understand the gospel, where they are will always link to who Jesus is. Okay, here's what I mean by that. The human condition is universal. That is, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All people need purpose in life. All people look for for freedom. All people search at some point along the way for significance and for forgiveness. There's a part of it that is a universal condition of humanity. So if somebody is searching for purpose, they will find their ultimate purpose in relationship with Jesus. Is somebody searching for identity? They find their true identity in Christ. If you're searching for forgiveness, you'll find it in Jesus. If you need grace, if you need hope, if you need life, I know a guy and his name is Jesus. What we're looking for is found in him. So after Philip shared the news, the Ethiopian eunuch saw water and he asked him, what would get in the way of him being baptized? Now ask yourself the question, why would this guy see water and immediately associate it with baptism? Go back to your big truth. Christian baptism is a symbolic act of obedience that identifies a person with Jesus while telling the gospel story. Now we have to be careful here, careful that we allow Scripture Not our traditions, not our denominational practices, not our personal opinions to direct how we think about baptism. So I want us to break this statement down into smaller portions. Here's the first part of our statement. Christian baptism is a symbolic act. Let's stop right there for a moment. A symbol represents 
something else. One of the most well-known symbols in our culture is a wedding ring. Okay, when somebody has a wedding ring, the, the ring for that couple represents the covenant relationship they entered into as well as their love for each other. Now, somebody wearing a ring does not make them married. But for someone who is married, that ring now symbolizes that they are in covenant relationship with somebody else. In the same way, baptism is one in which when a person enters covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ, they repent of their sin by placing faith in Jesus. That covenant is symbolized through baptism. Now listen closely. Being baptized does not make somebody a Christian. But once somebody is a Christian, being baptized is a symbol to let the world know they are in covenant relationship with God. Both symbols take significance after the covenant has occurred. So look at what it says in verses 36 through 38. As they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all of your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop. The only prerequisite for believer's baptism is belief in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now that word believe, it has two different parts. Part is intellectual agreement, and the other part is entrusting oneself. Now this is important that we distinguish between the two because there's a lot of people who believe in the historical Jesus. They believe that he was a real man. They believe that he walked on the earth 2,000 years ago. They believe he was a great teacher. They believe he had disciples. They believe he was a miracle worker. They believe he died on a Roman cross. Some even believe that he rose from the dead on the third day. They believe intellectually. But here's the thing. They don't believe in him as their Lord and Savior. They don't understand how his life and his death and his resurrection has any bearing on their life at this time. To entrust yourself to the gospel message, it means that you recognize you are a sinner and Jesus is the Savior. That person is recognizing that Jesus did not die on the cross for his sin. He died on the cross for our sin. They recognize there's nothing they could ever do to earn salvation. There's nothing they could ever do to make things right themselves. They recognize he died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. He rose three days later that we might have life, and he offers eternal life, a reconciled relationship to those who turn from their sin by placing faith in Jesus Christ. And that individual says, I want that. They say, I don't have a plan B. It's not that Jesus is one among many options. They're not hedging their bets and throwing Jesus in. Rather, they are saying, Jesus, will you save me? Hey, it's not, I just understand that you live. Will you save me? Will you take the finished work of the cross and apply it to my life? When a person does that, they're saved. Christian baptism is a symbolic act, here it is, of obedience. Just before Jesus ascended back to heaven, he gave a final command found over in Matthew 28, 19. He said, go and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's very clear. As somebody enters covenant relationship, as they are a follower of Christ, he says, baptize them. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So who exactly should be baptized? Any person who has repented of their sin by placing faith in Jesus Christ needs to be baptized. Does that mean that children can be baptized? If they have repented of their sin by placing faith in Jesus Christ, they 100% can be baptized. So what if a person doesn't know a lot about the Bible? Can they be baptized? Absolutely. Baptism has nothing to do with your Bible knowledge. It has everything to do with covenant relationship with God. What if a person's not a Baptist? Can they be baptized? Yes. 
Baptism is not a denominational thing. It is a Christian thing. Being baptized does not make you a Baptist any more than raising your hands makes you a Pentecostal. So when should a person be baptized? Well, the eunuch in Acts 8 was baptized immediately. The 3,000 on the day of Pentecost were baptized the same day. Cornelius, Lydia, the Philippian jailer, their households, they had a similar experience based on Acts chapter 10 and chapter 16. The pattern of the New Testament is that believers are baptized immediately or very soon after entering covenant relationship with Christ. Let's continue with our phrase. Christian baptism is a symbolic act of obedience. Here it is. That identifies a person with Jesus. In baptism, we identify with him in his death, his burial, in his resurrection. If you want to know more of what that identification looks like, read Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. It makes the connection between identification and baptism. Now go back for just a moment to our wedding ceremony analogy. That is, in a ceremony, identification also happens with a name change. If you'll notice, often the bride's last name changes to that of the groom's last name. There's identification that is happening. So, for example, in our wedding ceremony, at the very end, the pastor said, I'd like to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Paul Gotthart. That is, for myself and Bria, we are now identified together, and she's also seen to be identified in me, in my name. The same is true when it comes to baptism. In the New Testament, you'll notice that the church is called the bride, and Jesus is the bridegroom. By the way, there's also a name change that happens. When you enter covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ, guess what your name changes to? You a Christian. You know what that means? Little Christ. It means you are identified with him. Here's the next one. Christian baptism is a symbolic act of obedience that identifies a person with Jesus while telling the gospel story. Jesus gave two sacraments to his church to remember his death. Baptism is a one-time occurrence to mark our new life in Christ. Communion is an ongoing ordinance to remind us of the price that was paid for our redemption. Every time a person is baptized, if they are baptized biblically, after salvation, by immersion, every time that happens, you'll notice that the story of the gospel is shared. Look at these three phrases found in verses 38 and 39. It says that the eunuch went down in the water, symbolizing death. He baptized him. Baptizo, it means to immerse, to take under the water. It symbolizes his burial. And then he came up out of the water, verse number 39, symbolizing the resurrection. You'll often find at the very end of a, a time of somebody being baptized, the pastor or whoever's baptizing them might say something like this, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, and here it is, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Okay, there's an identification piece that tells the gospel story. The gospel speaks of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Every baptism in the New Testament followed that same format. Here's how simple it was. A person believes in Jesus as Lord and Savior. God, in his grace, saves that person. And in an act of obedience and identification, they are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you have repented of your sin by placing faith in Jesus Christ, and you have not been baptized, I want to encourage you today to step forward in obedience with Christ. It is a trust and obey proposition. If you wait for everybody to be in town before you get baptized, you will probably never get baptized. If you wait until you understand everything about the Bible before you get baptized, I guarantee you, you will never get baptized. If you wait until you feel worthy of salvation and baptism, uh, you're probably never going to get baptized. So people might be wondering, like, 
What do I do? Because maybe I was baptized as an infant. Does that count? Okay, hear me clearly on this. There's no question that an infant baptism initiated by parents and family is meaningful in that family. That is not believer's baptism. The believer's baptism we see in the New Testament happens after repentance has occurred. It is to show somebody has entered covenant relationship, not the hopes that they will enter covenant relationship. So maybe you've been baptized before, but you were actually saved later. Should you be rebaptized? Well, let's go back to what is biblical baptism. Biblical baptism happens after salvation and by immersion. You say, but Paul, you don't understand. I've been at this church a long time. I've taught Sunday school. I sing in the choir. What are people going to say if I get baptized today? It's going to be awkward. I understand what you're talking about. And I'd like to share a little story with you. Let's step into Paul's story time. I made a profession of faith two weeks before I was three years old. I was in a grocery store parking lot, and I told my mom I didn't want to die and go to hell, and would she tell me how to go to heaven? My mom prayed with me in a grocery store parking lot. I was baptized at five years old, but I never had assurance of my salvation. Every time the gospel was ever presented, I felt this unsettledness in my spirit. You need to get saved. You need to get saved. And I kept praying a prayer because I thought a prayer was going to save me. But here's the thing. I was trying to get God to do a bargain with me. I thought if I prayed a prayer, that was it. He wasn't looking for anything on my side. He wanted me to repent of my sin by placing faith in Jesus. It wasn't until the summer of 1994 in a hotel room in Clemson, South Carolina, at the age of 21, that I got saved. When I got saved... The first time in my life, I felt like I was whole. I was excited. I I went to church constantly. I was reading my Bible constantly. Uh, My my desires changed. I, I ended up finishing my undergrad degree. I went into a mentoring program for ministry. I went through seminary. I had been a pastor for three and a half years. And then I am teaching on baptism one Sunday morning. And God brought me under conviction that my baptism was on the wrong side of my salvation. So in North Carolina on a Sunday morning after me baptizing 10 other people, the last guy turned around and baptized me as a pastor. I understand awkward. I understand confusing. Could you imagine the conversations down at the restaurant with the Methodist after the service? How was y'all's service today? It was good. Worship was strong, preaching pretty solid. Our pastor got baptized this morning. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no, you mean your pastor baptized us. Oh, he did that too, but he also got right with God and got baptized. Here's my reason for saying that. Don't let fear hold you back in obedience. Don't let what you think somebody else might say hold you back. At the end of the day, we stand before God alone. In our hearts, we have to know, God, am I right with you? And by the way, in this church, when somebody takes a step forward in obedience to Jesus, this is a church that celebrates people walking forward in obedience. So today, if you have placed faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, but you have not been baptized. I want to give you that opportunity today. We got the tank filled. We got multiple pastors ready to go. We got clothes for you to change into. We have towels for you to dry off on. We have cameras ready to take the most beautiful pictures you've ever seen in your life. The question is going to be, If God's talking to you this morning, will you be willing to step forward in obedience and identification with Christ? 
So in just a moment, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to open up a time of invitation. And this morning, if you need to be baptized, there's going to be pastors down at the end of these different rows. And there's going to be pastor's wives. There's going to be counselors. If you need to take that step, here's, here's your part. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat, wherever you might be, mezzanine, balcony, bottom floor, wherever you might be. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat, walk down, tell one of the pastors or counselors, I need to be baptized. If that happens, they're going to ask you a couple of questions. They're going to make sure you're ready for this, and they will take it from there. In a crowd of this size, I guarantee you, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of people in this room right now who God's speaking to you. Teenager, is he talking to you? Senior adult, is he talking to you? Mom, dad, you got your kids right next to you. Is he talking to you? You might say, Paul, I don't want to be the only one. We got that too. There's 10 already ready to be baptized this morning. You are not alone. We have children through senior adults being baptized this morning. Here's the thing. If God is prompting you, let today be the day you say, I am not ashamed to identify with Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you would, bow with me for prayer. And pastors, you can come. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking this morning that you alone would do what only you can do in this place. God, we are praying today that there would be dozens and dozens of people this morning who say, I am not ashamed to identify with Christ, and they will come forward in believer's baptism. Lord, we are asking today that it would be a celebration. Lord, I pray that you would remove any obstacle, any fear, God. I pray that there's going to be people that they are going to step out because it's in their obedience that others will have the courage to take the next step. Lord, may you alone be glorified in this place as only you can do. And God, we're going to thank you and we're going to praise you for what you do at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if you would stand where you're at right now, there's going to be multiple songs that are going to be sung this morning. There is time for you. So I am going to encourage you, if you need to be baptized this morning, would you step forward, talk to one of our pastors, talk to one of our counselors, and let's take this next step of obedience with Christ. You are among friends this morning. We will celebrate with you. decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. There's time for you right now. There's people all around who are coming forward at this point. Don't let today be the day that you say no to the promptings of the Spirit of God. We have people all around that are coming. There is time for you. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Will you decide? Will you decide now? to follow Jesus. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? 
There's still time. Look right now, there's groups, there's families that are going out together right now. If you have been saved and baptized, I'm gonna ask you not only while you're singing, I'm gonna ask you to be praying. Pray that the enemy is bound. Pray that the only spirit active in this room is the Holy Spirit. Pray that in this moment there's family legacies that are being changed as they're watching mom and dad and grandmother and granddaddy step forward in obedience to Christ. This morning, if God's prompting you, now's the time. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Would you respond as the Spirit prompts you? Lord, I come. I come. Bowing in, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I Celebrate what God is doing. There's been every bit of 40 to 50 people that have walked out right now. God is at work. These are those moments right now where I guarantee you there has been lies the enemy has been sowing in the minds of people for years, and God is bringing them down piece by piece right now. Keep praying, keep praying. Revival happens on the other side of obedience. Time to celebrate. So teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Oh, Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Yes, you are.
God is at work. Amen. There are still people who are coming even right now. But we got a group, I believe, that's ready to go up here. And there's a real good chance that they're going to be baptized. We're going to sing again. And they're just going to give some other people a chance to get ready. And they're going to get baptized. So, by the way, when the Spirit of God shows up, don't worry about what's on the clock. Okay? I, I promise this is the most important thing that is happening in this moment right now. So turn your attention to the baptistry. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And our, our first um, believer is Veda Andrews, and she is surrounded by her family and friends that love her so much. And, uh, you know, Veda made a decision a while back, riding in the car with Grandma, and then during vacation Bible school this past summer, it was like the Lord was calling her that it was time. And so uh, she made that wonderful decision. Veda, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Based on your confession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. family is the Walkers, Liam and his dad Stephen, they're coming in. So, um, and Liam, I'll let you stand over here right now. So, uh, uh, we were actually, uh, com Liam completed first steps, and we were meeting as a family, and dad Stephen, um, and realize, you know, I was saved as a young man, a youth, and but I never followed the Lord in believer's baptism. And so today is the day he's following the Lord in biblical baptism. <laughs> so Stephen, what is your confession? Uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Based on your confession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. And here's Liam. And so uh, Liam actually, this past year, was in Mrs. Holman's class out at Sherwood Christian. And uh, just one day during recess, the kids actually were talking about sharing the gospel with one another and um, I think there's a lot of revival going on in that class and so Liam, Liam went home and he was thinking about those things and on his own at home he prayed to receive Christ as his Savior and Lord so Liam what is your confession that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior amen so Liam Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. All right, we have the Goodmans. Another great story. The Lord's been moving in a wonderful way. All right. Well, church, this is Shiley Ray Goodman, and she also is in Mrs. Holman's was in Mrs. Holman's class this past year. And at recess, lunch recess, uh, the kids actually were talking to her about the Lord, and they led her <laughs> to the Lord at lunch and at recess, which is really exciting. So, Shiley Ray, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. All right. 
here's Blaze. Or, or no? Okay. 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 <laughs> so, um, we, uh, Blaze and his wife, Linda, were in uh, Discover One a week ago, and uh, Wayne Holt was meeting with Blaze, and that's where Blaze came to accept Christ as his Savior and Lord. And so, just a week ago. And then moments later, we had our conversation with Shiley Ray, um, like a, a mini first steps all there together, which is really wonderful. And so, Blaze, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, Blaze, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. Hold on to me. <laughs> Amen. Risen to walk in newness of life. Um, all right. And this is Linda, also known as Yaya. Yaya? Okay. <laughs> you have Yaya and Pappy. <laughs> That's normally what they're called at home. And, uh, but Linda um, grew up in a different denomination, but she did get saved in the 80s. Actually, she had a relationship with a, with a believer, that, and through that relationship came to know Christ. But um, never actually received believer's baptism. So today is the day. Linda, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of his death and risen to walk in newness of life. Thank you. Well, here we have Hayden, Hayden Boyette. And Hayden has a, a, a recent decision. It was during vacation Bible school that he prayed to receive Christ with his teachers. And so it's a great story. Hayden, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. And, uh, you know, right after VBS, we had a, a, a pretty big um, first steps class. We had 12 that came that day, and Hayden was one of those. And Dad's in the water showing that he's spiritual leader of the home and is participating today. So, Hayden, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. Here's Ella Shirey, and uh, Ella was also in Vacation Bible School just a, a month ago, and it was during that time that, with her teachers that she prayed to receive Christ as her Savior and Lord, and she also has been to First Steps, and Dad's in the water here, a spiritual head, taking part today. So Ella, what is your confession? Amen. Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, and risen to walk in newness of life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo! My grace is So this is my daughter, Mia, who we adopted from China. And uh, Mia got kind of fake saved a couple of years ago. We saw no evidence of, sal of salvation. And uh, this past year, uh, Mia had a genuine surrender moment with the Lord and um, wept at home and um, has given a powerful testimony. And she's going on a fifth grade mission trip tomorrow morning. So this is exciting. <laughs> Mia, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> Mia, based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. 
They used to walk in a new way of life. And this is my youngest daughter, Grace, who was saved last year after watching Show Me the Father and Mia's testimony of being adopted. And so Grace is eight years old, and she has had a sincere testimony of her faith in Christ. Mia, uh, Grace, <laughs> Grace, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my daughter and my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in a new way of life. Just added one this morning. This is Bella Ray. Uh, Bella uh, came to this church with her family about a year ago. And the Lord's done a lot in her whole family's lives. Bella's been coming to discipleship at my house with my daughter, uh, Karis. Bella, what is your profession of faith? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with, in Christ of baptism. Raised to walk in a new way of life. All right, church, we are just getting started. We have got a, a fantastic group up here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our next one. Church, this is Raquel. Raquel felt convicted this morning. And Raquel has placed her faith in Jesus and she wanted to get baptism on the right side of her salvation this morning. So Raquel, what is your profession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Based on that profession, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bearing life and practice. Raised to walk in a new day way of life. Church, this is Mallory. Mallory, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Based on your confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried to life the death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Jeff. Jeff also felt convicted. He's felt it for a long time that he needed to be baptized this morning. So Jeff, what is your confession? Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Well, Jeff, based on that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bearing the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. There I go. <laughs> Church, this is Mallory. Lord, uh, we are uh, so excited this morning to ba keep baptizing. We've got a whole list of people ready to go, but Mallory, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Well, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mary, the likeness of the death, raised to walk in a new way of life. <laughs> All right, church, this is Sherry. Sherry, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> Well, Sherry, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Carry the likeness of the death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Robin. Robin, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> Well, Miss Robin, based off your confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Raised to walk in a new way of life.
Church, this is Grant. Great. Grant, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, what is your profession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yes, well, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I used to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Phil. Phil, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> Phil, based off that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of a death, raised to walk in a new way of life. I got another family member. This is Micah Kendrick, my oldest brother Shannon's youngest son. And uh, Micah made a decision for Christ years ago and has not been baptized and at the end of the service this morning he told his parents he was ready to get baptized so Micah what is your confession Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior based upon your profession of faith I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit buried with Christ in baptism raised to walk in a new way of life Well, church, we are still going. <laughs> church, this is Catherine. Catherine, what is your profession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, Catherine, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning as my sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear the likeness of his death. Raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Tyree. Tyree, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Tyree, based off that profession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried the likeness of his death. Raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Miss Nancy. Nancy, what is your profession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I love him. Okay, don't. I don't want my love. Don't? Yes. Oh, you do? Okay. All right, well, Miss Nancy, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in like this of his death. Raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is John. John, what is your profession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> John, based off that profession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Josie. Josie, what is your profession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Josie, based off that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury the likeness of his death. Raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Patrick. Patrick, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. 
Patrick, based off that profession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury the likeness of the pet, raised to walk in a new way of life. Thank you. Church, this is Kirsten. Kirsten, what is your profession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Kirsten, based off that profession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury the likeness of the Son, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Tamisi. Hi, Church. <laughs> Tamisi, what's your profession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, it is based off that confession that it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bearing the likeness of the Seth, raised to walk in a new way of life. All right. Hey, I have Shelby Chu and her granddaughter, Essie Doyle. You can just stand right there. All right. Well, Shelby made a decision a long time ago when she was 10 years old, and today she's uh, following the Lord in Believer's Baptism. Shelby, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your profession, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. Reason to walk in newness of life. <laughs> and uh, Essie, you made a decision a while back, and I remember that, and I remember you've been to first steps and just kind of waiting for that right time. Well, today is the right time. Praise Amen. the Lord. So, Essie, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, and risen to walk in newness of life. Church, this is Jeremy. Jeremy, what is your profession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Jeremy, it is because of that confession that it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Brenda. Brenda, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Brenda, it is because of that confession that it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There in the likeness of the death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Millsap with her parents, and they've had a very active summer of ministry involved in uh, wind shape and all kinds of things. And uh, Maddie made a decision to follow Christ, and she's been to first steps. And, uh, so, Maddie, what is your decision? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death risen to walk in newness of life. And 
and this is Wes Norman. All right, when did you make a decision to follow Christ? About a year ago. All right, wonderful. And what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Today you declare that. Well, West, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. Oh, got your glasses. Okay, great. <laughs> this is Jacob Spell. And uh, Jacob made a decision. When did you make a decision? Four years ago. Four years ago. All right. And today's the day, I guess. All right. Jacob, what is your profession? Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Based on your profession of faith, Jacob, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen to walk in newness of life. And here we have Caroline, who is actually visiting. Um, yeah. And um, today was the day of salvation for Caroline. She just made a profession of faith. So are you going home today or okay you're going back home today so we're just so glad that you were in Albany at Sherwood the Lord had a divine appointment for you today well Caroline what is your confession this is my Lord and Savior. amen and Caroline based on your profession of faith I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit buried in the likeness of his death Risen to walk in newness of life. Church, this is Martha. Martha, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Martha, it's based off that confession that it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Rachel. Rachel, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Rachel, based off that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Nathan. Nathan, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Nathan, it's based off that profession this morning that I, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bearing the likeness of the death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Lindsay. Lindsay, what is your confession this morning? Georgia, Jesus is my Lord. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Well, Lindsay, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Very the likeness of his death, grace to walk in a new way of life. This is the last step, tricky. <laughs> Church, this is Misty. Misty, what is your confession this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, Misty, it is my privilege to baptize you based off that confession this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life.
church, this is Naomi. Naomi, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> yep, that's perfect. <laughs> Naomi, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Mike. Mike, what is your profession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Mike, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning based on that confession in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. I already took my fall, so you don't have to be nervous. All right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Church, this is Frankie. Frankie, what is your confession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Frankie, based off that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Addie. Addie, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Oh. Scoot up right now. What? Addie, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bearing the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new Church family, we got a whole bunch more coming. <laughs> Church, this is Karen Kitchens. She actually made the decision to trust Jesus just a few minutes ago back in the council room. So Karen, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Based upon that confession, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we Christ in baptism, raise the walk in a new way of life. Church family, this is Elam Russell, and Elam is here today with his dad in the water in support of him. And uh, Elam made the decision to trust Jesus back last August. But he is here today to follow that decision up in believer's baptism. <laughs> so Elam, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. All right. Well, based upon that confession, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in a new way of life. <laughs> Church family, this is Benjamin Brooks. Benjamin also made the decision to trust Jesus a little while back, but today he's here realizing that he needed to get his salvation uh, or get his baptism on the right side of his salvation. So Benjamin, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Well, Benjamin, based upon that confession, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism. Raise the walk in the new way of life. Church family, this is Lila. Lila, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. And Lila's father is here in the water as the spiritual head of the home, so we want to praise the Lord that he's here with her this morning. 
Well, Lila, based off your confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church, this is Ava. Ava, what is your confession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Well, Ava, based off that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church family, this is my son-in-law, Rich Reed Hatcher, who's coming to get his baptism on his right side of his salvation. Reed, what is your confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Because of that confession, it's my privilege to baptize you, Reed, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. Church, this is Michelle. Michelle, what is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. No doubt. Well, Miss Michelle, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning based off that confession in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Church family, this is Sue. Sue, what is your confession this morning? I finally realized I got baptized on the wrong side of my salvation, and I am making it right today. Amen. Amen. Well, Miss Sue, based off that confession, it is my privilege to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried the likeness of his death, raised to walk in a new way of life. Oh! 
Good Sunday, huh? Good gravy. I kept looking back to see if anybody's still coming. This is great. Ken, you up, buddy. Amen. Let's give God praise one more time. Amen. For what he's done. Amen. Amen. There's only one that deserves his praise. Lives have been changed. Families healed. Relationships delivered. Obedience followed. Amen. The Lord has done this. So as we prepare to leave this place today, let's pray. And just thank God for what he's done. Can we do that? Wherever you are, you can stand, you can sit, kneel, get at the altar, whatever you decide to do. Let's just pray and just thank God for what he's done. Father, we thank you. You've done mighty things today. God, there were people here that were doubting salvation, God, they came. There were people here that were afraid to walk in obedience, and they came. God, there were people here wondering about their eternal salvation, and they came. God, we thank you. The Holy Spirit did a work in people's hearts, and they came. And God, I will not even be foolish enough to think that those were all the ones who came. There are still people here wondering, is it too late for me? The answer is no, it's never too late. The Bible says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I pray that we will continue to see the waters of baptism stirred. God, I pray that people will walk in obedience, not because it's it's the lights and, and the things that God, because people are just being obedient to your word. God, would you be with us today? Would you continue to walk with us, Lord? Allow your word to speak to us. And Father, we'll continue to give you the praise, honor, and glory. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. As we prepare to leave today, if you're new here, if your first time here, we would love to meet you right out at the welcome desk. If you're here and you said, man, I know, listen, I know it's somebody in here. I wanted to come, but I just couldn't. Myself and some other pastors will be standing down front as well as at the next step desk out in the atrium. Listen, don't let this moment pass you by. Say, I need to do this desperately. I need to get my life right through Christ Jesus or I need to walk in obedience unto him. Amen? Amen. So you're dismissed. We got about 27 more minutes of connect groups. So you're dismissed to connect groups. We'll see you back tonight for prayer service at 5.30 and the service at 6. God bless you.